what a press conference by Pat Riley, uh, Brian. Uh, that was, uh, I mean, it was a real, he told Jimmy to buck up Buttercup. Not sure how much help you're going to get around these parts. Can't be forcing dudes to make trades. I, well, I, dude, I that was funny. It was a funny press conference. I think everybody is mad on every front. Every side of the debate is mad at Pat Riley today. He really played every side he could. Uh, I, I've, I've delighted in the Twitter experience today. I tweeted that it was like exactly like an Always Sunny uh, meme. The one where uh, he's like, oh, I'm playing both sides. So always come out on top. He basically said every single quote that he could have for every single scenario that the Heat could go this offseason, whether it's running it back, um, always swinging bigs like he quoted saying he'd go you know, for a home run and potentially maybe land Dame. Obviously, you can say him his name verbatim. but um, And then he also just talked about like the smaller moves that maybe could put them over the fence, which for the Heat most likely would be like vet minimums because maybe they can pull together a mid-level. But uh, other than that, that, there's not much else they can do unless all trades well it's kind of funny because there's a parade of players opting out of their deals like kyle kuzma yeah. opted out and there's been like some movement on that front but in reality they haven't they don't have cap space right they, they yep. don't have cap space and they're not going to have the money to kind of get these starter level role players yeah and in the past when they didn't it's like with jimmy and kyle they were able to swing swing uh sign trades but right now they're so They've never really entered an offseason where they're like really deep into the tax. And this is like the first time, I think the last 10, 11 years, where they really are entrenched in it. And if they want to get out and potentially make those kind of moves where they can maybe get a Draymond Green or a Kyrie Irving, they have to dump like significant salary, like 30, 40 million kind. Well, I mean, and then that's kind of the issue, right, with the Beal trade where they wanted to unload Duncan Robinson. Had a conversation with Barry Jackson on Twitter. And I was curious as to why Oladipo. Uh, was it included, right? Yeah. And 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 in reality, he said it's because they wanted to. Um, it's because they wanted to to kind of shed that money. They want to give out but, bad salary for another bad salary rather than than helping Washington out with two expirings and clear their books instead of adding more money to Miami's books. So I, I get really, what they wanted to do. They wanted to basically give a bad contract and and hope that maybe they could also like help each other out in a way because i mean kyle Lowry's expiring still pretty big but obviously phoenix was um better positioned to give out more salary because your owner wants to spend as much as he wants <laughs> in this new cb without without further ado welcome 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 to the bleacher report miami heat trade free agency nba draft extravaganda i'm your host on carlo navas with me today i have my trusty producer and co-founder of Miami Heat Beat. Catch us on MIA Heat Beat on Twitter. A long-standing podcast of 10 years. Brian Goins, capologist, expert. Many titles you wear today. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's an exciting offseason for the Heat. Obviously, making to the finals. It was, was an impressive run. Nobody expected them to be there, uh, let alone be three wins away from a title. Um, obviously, we're looking at some trades current stream um hoping to see what's out there that Miami could potentially bring in as acquisitions to you know push them over the top and win that first title in franchise history since what 2013 it's been 10 years exactly yeah. from when it's we started our years, podcast was, yeah so our last, we're hoping that last, Miami can yeah. maybe make some moves to uh get back to that that championship we have people on Biscayne Boulevard in chat. Dwayne Wade Boulevard <laughs> Dwayne, Wade, Dwayne Wade Boulevard uh we have people in chat Ready to go. Excited. Yeah. We have Young a Young Axis says Bam is untouchable. We have L Lopez 67 saying we're not giving up Bam. So we oh have God. people steadfast, holding strong with the Do news. Do we need today. to talk about this real quick and just put put that out? Like we, we can save that for the end for the okay. for the big blazer uh extravaganza. But That's a tease. hey, <laughs> it's a tease. We're, we have a couple of trades that we're going to talk about today. We're going to kind of go from, from the smallest to the biggest, kind of give you a little taste of all the different kinds of moves Miami can make. Thankfully, we're joined by Brian Goins, who is an expert in the, in the, in the NBA salary cap, and it's going to get pretty complicated going forward. Brian, yeah. our first team that we're going to talk about as a potential trade partner for the Heat are the Brooklyn Nets. Now, you know, there's been some talk about Brooklyn maybe kind of moving around in the draft. They might want to move up a little bit. Uh, funny yeah. enough, even though the Heat made the finals and were a lower, you know, they, they are a lower seed than the Nets, so they have a they have a higher pick and they won 
some sort of series of coin flips to, ha- to have a to have a pretty good pick for a team that made the final. So, Brian, yes. Brooklyn might want to move up. Miami has scouted a ton of guys below where they're supposed to draft. Kind of seems like it, it could be a good a good there, there could be a deal there. Yeah. So for for the Nets, the report is that they're looking to potentially move up from the 21 or 22nd pick. They actually have both those two picks and potentially move up somewhere within the end of the to like the high teens. Um, Miami has a number 18 pick. So um, part of the package that I think I want to put together is a way to get one of their wings. Um, one of the guys that we know Miami has always had a high eye on is Dorian Finney-Smith. He has a contract that still has three years left. Um, his salary for next season entering would be $13.9 million. So in order to trade match that at 110%, because it would be made during a new league year, we're looking at sending about, give or take, um, like $13.9 million-ish. Um, basically, we're trying to almost trade match in a way, because Miami doesn't really have, like, I mean, depending on what you think they would get, I'm better than, like, obviously switching the 18 pick for a 22nd pick. Like, to me, I think what would help them is, like, an expiring salary like Victor Oladipo as soon as he opts in he'd be trade eligible. So I think putting Victor into trade makes sense because it also helps the Nets in terms of clearing out some salary for, for future years since Doran has three years left on his deal. And then I think like Haywood Highsmith gives him a chief replacement player for now and also for the future. He has uh, at least two more years left on his deal. He has a guarantee, a non-guaranteed contract still for next season. So even if they don't even want him on the team, they could easily like get rid of him and, and doesn't count towards their cap books for next season. But I imagine maybe it might be a player that they would want to, um, at least for one more year. And then obviously the 18 pick would be the prize um, possession that the Nets would want if they want to move up, you know, those four or three spots, depending on where, which pick they're using. Because they could obviously use the 21st pick or the 22nd pick. I just chose the worst one that they had in the first round of the season. Absolutely. So, I, and you've, you've, you've said it, but Dorian Finney-Smith has been a guy that the Heat have had their eye on for quite a bit. I think he fits kind of with, with a lot of what they do. Um, and, and they're, listen, one of their big weaknesses is they're, they're a little short on the wings. He's six, seven, not exactly power, you know, not exactly a big power forward wing, but certainly they're short. It's just really Jimmy and Caleb Highsmith, yeah. you know, is at six, seven as well. Didn't play as much as you want. We know that Spo and Riley like veterans Dorian Finney Smith proven winner has, 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 been a really solid guy for the Mavericks for many years. Um, yeah. You know, a so-so shooter had one year where he shot 39%, another year where he shot close to 38, but a lot of 30, last year was 33. He had a, a couple years of 30. He um, plays better in the playoffs, though, I've noticed, though. In the regular season, he doesn't shoot as well as he does in the playoffs. He's almost like a P.J. Tucker in that sense. Like, he kind of levels up a little bit um, in the Playoffs shooting line. I would say it's like it's not on volume, like crazy volume. It's, it's on like those three, four attempts per game. What you really like is his defensive versatility, and he just makes a lot of winning plays. He, he, stuff that doesn't show up on the box score, which obviously Miami values extremely compared to most teams. The, the interesting thing about this trade is, you know, and, and the fans have grown to really love Haywood Highsmith. We have Cool Carrot in chat saying Haywood Highsmith is underrated, and I absolutely believe so. I, he, I, I think what he provides you, if you're the Heat, he's a, he has a lot of upside. He's young. He's very cheap. Although it kind of seems like Eric Spolster doesn't trust him as much as maybe the fan base does. Um, you know, so I, there's kind of that. Like, do you go? Yeah, I mean, it's not like you know, he, you want to go young or younger, develop your guys. But also, I think Dorian is, is a more ready player. And you know, you 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 kind of move back in the draft. You get off of Oladipo's money. Um, and and yeah. they will as well. Although Oladipo D- could be used as a trade piece later. Yeah, and and also for Nets, like Victor Oladipo, while he can rehab wherever, yeah, he could be sent uh, additionally as um, future caps, you know, filler with his expiring salary. They could also wave and stretch him and save even more money under this current cap year if they want, if they need it. Um, I don't think they would do that, but it's a possibility if they. But they have to do that before the start of the season, so. It's kind of up to them yeah. if maybe they find a second trade right after this one. Maybe this could expand to a three-team deal. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I, I actually do think this trade looks good on paper for Miami. I, I just don't know how much value the Nets have in moving four slots. It really just depends on if there's a particular guy they really want to draft, and it's in Miami's range. To me, that might be why they would make this trade. Other than that, I don't also really kind see of- much more value for the Nets. 
feels like a lateral move for Miami as well, to be honest. But, you know, we just kind of wanted to do a small trade and move up. We have Nick Accord in chat saying Nets going to get more for Dorian Finney-Smith than the Wizards did for Beal, which is really funny and kind of true. That's this funny. We have uh, two chill passes. I like this trade. Then they could draft the forward from Marquette. That's your guy, Brian, the 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 Marquette kid. What was his name? Yeah, I like a couple guys in his draft. But, yeah, in that range for Miami at, at pick 22 could be guys like um, – uh, Maxwell Prosper, who is he, yeah, he's like a he's a very like That's a good kid. um yeah, and he's a Marquette kid. He plays he's a small ball four or five player. He's more of a four, um, but he switches one to four, which is amazing. And his jump shot is improving every year. He's actually really close friends with Benedict Mafferin. Um, I actually found that out recently as I was looking into him. So um, they're they they compare each other pretty like similarly in terms of how they're games are he just thinks that he's more of a late bloomer than Maffron was so he thinks that entering this next season as a rookie that he can potentially you know make a significant jump in terms of his development so i like that if miami could potentially land both finney smith and then a guy like maxwell prosper another guy i also like is um airpods his, his nickname his name is uh, brandon podwicks he's a He's like a combo guard. He plays for Santa Clara, which is the same school that Jalen Williams got drafted um, recently to the Thunder last year. He had a really good year in terms of um, replacing Jalen Williams. He transferred and he he shot the ball extremely well, 43% on like seven attempts from three. Um, he has like crazy range. Um, he actually has a very similar game to Tyler though. So I don't know how much Miami would want to make that move unless yeah, we'll, they feel like we'll they're moving see. Tyler. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll have to we'll have to see on that, but not not too much on the draft. We have more trades to get to, uh, Brian. Let's let's go, let's uh, let's pivot to kind of more of a I think more of one of the prize picks. Uh, I think that Miami could potentially get. Not not sure yeah. how likely this is, but obviously this is a player that the Heat have had an eye on, and it's OG Ananobi, right? We talked about this the last time we were here on Bleacher Report talking trades, but it's hard to not be tantalized by a guy like Ananobi because the way he pairs with Bam and Jimmy slots right mm -hmm. between the two of them is that big power forward who can play some backup center. Toronto was very successful when they did so, particularly in, in their uh, championship defense year. They did that a lot. So he's going to be a guy that I think he's, he's going to be very desired around the league. Obviously, there's been reports that Toronto is very stingy with what they're going to get back, and it might cost yeah. Miami the whole – you know, the, the whole the whole asset, you know, empty it all out, Brian. So what would a trade for OG Ananobi look like, you know, going yeah. forward right here in this offseason? So I think for this, um, I, if I'm Miami, I think you're potentially moving Tyler Hero just because you have to extend OG after the season. He's on an expiring deal. So I think if you're if you're Miami, it's a it's a move where you're moving off always the salary that you have now for a guy who's making less this season, but moving forward is going to be making – probably around Tyler's range. So I think moving Tyler for OG Nanobi is like the beginning of this trade, but there's got to be more to it, I still think. Um, I think in order to make the salaries match, you have to add a guy like maybe Thaddeus Young, which would help Miami clear off the books after this season to be able to absorb OG's future salary. So I think adding Thaddeus Young makes sense um, in terms of what Miami would be getting back as well from Toronto. And then I think in order to sweeten the deal, I think you have to add at least probably two first round picks. Um, the ones I at put minimum, on, I think. Um, yeah, at minimum. And I'm probably, you might have, end up having to be three, but I'm just saying two for now. Cause I feel like that might be the sweet spot where Miami makes the deal. I think maybe three does one. Um, they be wouldn't push um, that third pick. I, I mean, you really saw what happened with Beal. They were reluctant to probably put in more than one pick just to land him. So I think three first rounders is like that area where, they really have to second guess if they want to make that deal or not. So if we're going to go with two, I think the 2023 first round pick makes sense. Um, even whoever they select, even if it's the new league year, we can still trade that player um, even after they make the selection. So 2023, I think 2027 would be the next one. I think they should move. Now that one's going to be an interesting trick um, pick to trade just because they still have that 2025 pick that's sent out to OKC. It's un. It's protect 25 and it could be unprotected in 2026. So it depends on whether or not they unprotected for 2025 or if they move it to 2026 and this 2027 pick then should be the 2028 because the stepping rule, you can't trade picks every other off season. So I, I say 2027 for now because it potentially could be unprotected in 2025, but you're going to need some help. 
um, I think, with with OKC to get that trade, uh, to get that pick moved. Um, and then beyond that, I think uh, maybe a second round pick is the third pick that Miami could move out. I, I chose the one that's in 2029. I mean, it's far enough out where, you know, maybe it might be a good pick because maybe Miami might not be as good. You know, during those years, it could be a high 30s pick if for whatever reason they're not, uh, you know, a successful team that season. So I thought, to me, that seems like a fair trade for both teams. But if the reports are true that Toronto is a little stingy, it might run that. Yeah, so I mean that's going to be tough for the Raptors. Uh, I, I, think, I think they're looking for a minimum three chats, picks. Like we don't want OG for hero. That's nonsense. I feel like people don't understand how good a player OG is, though. He just fits. He just fits really well with with Bam and Jimmy. But Brian, we have more guys <laughs> to get to. We have more trades to get to. We have a lot yeah. to get through got in this more. short amount more. of time. Let's let's go even higher. Let's get kind of a start. Let's get a guy Fine. who I think Fine. a lot if of people. If you guys don't think OG's good enough, I got one more. Or I got two more guys um, that I think might be good enough for you. So let's go and look at Chicago. Chicago currently they're uh, thinking. It's not even like official if they're going to move him or not, but they're thinking about potentially getting offers for Zach Levine and making him available in the market. So I think if you're Miami. Obviously, Tyler Hero would have to go because they played the exact same position. They're both going to be making crazy salary. Um, Levine has what? He's left on his contract. He's making $40 million next season. So to make that number work, you have to send out, what, roughly $36.5 million in salary. So I think for Miami, the package could easily be very similar to the one we did earlier, um, which would just be Tyler Hero and Victor Oladipo. Those are two players would have to be out for Miami to me- make those salaries match. To get to the salary. Oh. And then I think for that, um, basically beyond that, it's just like two first-round picks. And it's the same ones that we've mentioned earlier, the 2023 first and potentially the 2028 first or 2027. Either, or, either one of those two, depending on if you get the help from OKC or not, you can show those two picks you can move. To would me, a third pick be a deal-breaker for you, Brian? I think it would. I think his salary, his injury history... To me, it's, is he that much better than Tyler Hero and three first round picks when they weren't even reluctant? They were reluctant to even like consider those kind of offers for Donovan Mitchell last off season. So I don't know two first rounders is is that area where maybe Miami can make that move. It's very similar to some of the other moves they made in the past, like with Dragic, they gave up two first round picks. So I think that's like the area where Miami is like, okay, we can do it if we can get a All Star to come here. Unless he's a superstar, I think three first round picks is like off the books. I think some of it's. In, I think some of the the conversation around these moves is interesting. We have Zach uh, Spinks in chat says we don't need another wing, which I think is pretty funny, considering that I think that's probably their biggest position in need. I think some people might say they need a big man. I think other people might say they need some more shooting, which yes. is why you see a lot. Miami is super linked to a lot of uh, shooting guys in the draft. We got two. Chilpa says no. People don't understand how good Hero is. Not trading Hero for OG. Uh, for sure, or damn sure. He, you know, again, I think that they might be a little more willing to part with Tyler because of their success in the postseason without him. Now, I think Tyler's a really good player, but I also think that they also have bigger needs. Like, I think they need a guy at that power forward spot more than anything. Yeah. They're kind of still missing that guy. So that's kind of, you know, and, and it's been tough because there's not a lot of guys at that position available, Brian. I mean, really, the one that we came up with was, this OG Twitter guy on that same team would have been Siakam, but I think Siakam would be a lot more expensive, a lot more harder to get than OG. But yeah, who knows? Like so. it really just depends. Like there's there's guys in other teams. I mean, we even just mentioned Dorian Finney Smith as like a smaller move that Miami could make to still fill that four spot. Every player on the on the five man rotation doesn't have to be an all star player. You just need good players surrounding Jimmy and Ben. I just think they need that one more scorer. To me, Zach Levine probably fits the bill better than Tyler Hero. Obviously, he's way more expensive. You have to give up more draft equity to get that player on your team. Yeah. Is it worth the risk? It's up to Pat Riley to decide if that's if that's the move he wants to go to. He obviously didn't think the Brian was worth the risk for a very. They can go a couple ways, Brian, because like you know, you can lean more into your offense. You know, I, I think you know they they kind of need a little bit of help defensively with some size, but 
Yeah. In reality, their offense is really kind of what stalled out against against Denver. Obviously, Levine is another target on defense, and and then you'd have to rework your team. Probably, you know, Duncan Robinson gets gets moved at some point. You're obviously playing fewer minutes. You can't really play Robinson and Levine together. Obviously, Tyler goes in that deal. Uh, but, you mm-hmm. know, we kind of saw those issues of playing like Duncan and Tyler together. So they, they walk a very fine line because their two best players are non-shooters. Well, I guess Jimmy in the playoffs becomes a shooter. But in reality, they're not vol- Jimmy for sure is not a volume shooter. Yeah. Uh, and it just it gets complicated. It, it gets pretty complicated. Um, and and only, I think this. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Brian. Uh, I think I just think my only downside with this trade is more about his injury history. And two, like his style of play. While it's it's definitely pushed more perimeter based, he's not as much of a driver as he used to be. I feel like Miami does need that combination of a driver and a shooter. So I think the next the guy pressure. we'll get into the next yeah the rim pressure. So I think the next guy we'll get into, to me, is the perfect fit for Miami that they could acquire potentially this offseason. Well, I love what Gouda not nice in chat said. Let's go ahead and look at what a Dame trade would look like. And that's that. Listen, that's what it's all about, baby. That's what we're here for. Brian, <laughs> guide us to what a Damian Lillard trade. What does Dame time look in Miami? The savior, the the curator of culture, the the guy who's going to fix culture? this. Curator of culture. I mean, listen, Dame is culture. They got no bro. Portland. Let's, Dame, let's be real. They have not won anything with him on that team. And they haven't Dame, done themselves Dame's any about favors it. to help them win. <laughs> Dame's a culture guy, dude. I'm sorry. He I will never doubt for Miami. Damian Lillard. I'm just saying, I, 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 I would slow down. He's not like the all like, crazy like superstar ah, that, that uh, he he's great i think in miami he's not going to be Portland any longer in terms of helping them win games i think for miami what they need more than anything else is i think um they need the shooting and and the dribble penetration like i was saying so for for dame what i would want them to do is i think they need to potentially move victor oladipo again tyler hero <laughs> and i think Poor they need to add more player to sweeten that deal I think the round with between Jovich and Caleb Martin, I think the salaries are a lot easier to match when you add a guy like Caleb Martin to that deal because then you're it's a lot harder to give an expiring contract back to to Portland. Are you re- like I don't got like Caleb. Kyle Lowry. Actually, that's yeah, a go- non-starter for me, Brian. <laughs> Caleb Martin. So yeah, that that's a non-starter for me. I, I think. I mean, I, I I much rather move a guy like Jovich and. I think Kyle has to be in this deal if you're Portland because you get the salary, you get the huge salary relief. So, so if you if you consider that, then is Tyler here on the move? Because right now, what you're saying is, if you're just getting Damian Lillard back and maybe one vet minimum to like make the numbers match like a little easier and have Portland save a lot more money on the deal, um, the minimum you have to send out to make the numbers work. And next, this this isn't the next league year because. Um, he actually can't be traded until July 8th because he signed that extension last offseason. So he's basically, he has one year in terms of like his anniversary date of the extension before he can get traded. So you can't like make this trade. I mean, technically, yeah, you can agree in principle that this trade will happen like at the it deadline. Cannot, the the paperwork the deadline, cannot at the, pass at until the draft. July 8th. But correct, you can't make that trade call with the league office and say, hey, we're making this deal until July 8th. So... I mean, you have to make at least $41.49 million match. That's the minimum you have to send out 110% in order to get that deal for Miami, um, you know, to make it, you know, trade eligible. So if you're saying you don't want to trade uh, or if you want to trade Ty- um, Kyle Lowry, his salary is very similar to, to um, Tyler Hero. So are you trading Tyler Hero somewhere else in a future move, or does this end up becoming a three-team deal? Well, no, I, I think if you're if you're Portland, it's it's every available pick Miami has, Hero, and salary relief, okay. right? And so that's why I think Duncan Robinson doesn't make sense in that deal for them because they're not going to want to take that long-term money. Right. And I, I I guess if I'm if I'm trying to build a trade, I try to construct it in a way where. Portland gets Hero and Lowry and and just Lowry so that they can either A move him or B get that 30 million 30 million dollars of of okay. salary relief. So let's try it out. Then let's take off Caleb Martin from this deal. And Oladipo I think would also and have Oladipo, to go. And Oladipo since you you're trading basically changing out the expiring that Miami would send. Let's do Lowry. So combine you're going to send be, over Lowry. It's going to be like 50 million I think. Let's see what the number is. 
So yeah, incoming for for Portland is going to be fifty six point six. Outgoing is forty five point six. So let's just do the number really quick. Fifty six point six. Do reverse for for Portland so they can save money. So they Heat should send about or they should somehow give up. Portland would need to send a little bit more. Yeah, they need to send a little bit more. Actually, hold on, I need to do the opposite. Fifty six point six times one point one. So yeah, Miami needs to send out $62.26 million in salary to kind of help Portland in terms of like making the numbers work, which means Miami so has to I take guess that back. They have to take that back. I guess salary, it's... Basically, Miami has to take back. So Damian Miller makes 45.6. So let's subtract 45.6 from that. If you're talking like six, like a player making between $16 million, $17 million a year. So That's still in Portland's so roster. Yusuf Nurkic... Would be that a guy. probably is the guy, yeah. That makes that salary work, and you give you give them every available pick, and you help them clear off their books with two big contracts on multi year deals. Now the picks, um, can you can you include go... Jovic if you're Miami to because yeah, you, you know could. they're giving up Nurkic, you who could. I think they would have yeah. probably liked to move we for go ahead and Jovic, maybe a guy. Sure. Yeah, so instead um, of Caleb, and I would take back a minute one of their minimums. To make the numbers match a little better, so um, I don't think they have Portland's. One. They have a couple minimums. Uh, the one, one guy I've been taught with. Really, oh, can we take? Well, Woods is a free agent. Yeah, he's a free agent. Trenton Watford. Eubanks. Guy. Eubanks Watford. is a free agent too. They all have cap holds. That CH is cap holds. That means they're all free. Agents, yeah, I got you. So got they you. can't really be traded. I mean, it could sign trade, but Miami can't do sign trades, like I said earlier. So let's do this guy. I don't even know who he is to be honest, but he's a minimum. And then I think picks wise, we're going what pick. Every pick and pick, swaps. The pick this year, so 2023, um, after you trade 2023, you can potentially trade 2024 right after. But in order to make that work, I know this is have, like going a little pick for Portland. Deep. We, ha- we have, we, no, you have to pick for Portland too. Yes, yeah, so you have to pick for Portland. And then for 2024, you still need help from OKC because that 2025 pick is out there. It's a stepping rule still in play. Um, so we're, we're, we're assuming... OKC has already helped out Miami before this goes into play. They've moved the 2025 protected first round pick to 2026 unprotected. That leaves Miami basically four first round picks that they can send. So 2023 from this year's draft would be the first pick. Then you got 2024. The remaining two picks would be in 2028 and then 2030 or 2030, not 2023, 2030. Um, they don't have that on here. So we'll just Let's put 2020, but pretend that's 2030. And that would be the maximum amount of picks that Miami could send out, not counting pick swaps. I and mean, pick swaps could be in the years 2027, 2029. Um, I, I don't really care too much about those. I, I think for Miami, the unprotected first are what Portland's going to value the most. But, but if you need a third, you can. And that's about the And then the reason, by the way, the reason why the, the 2030 pick doesn't show here is because the NBA draft has not happened yet. Yeah. So when that draft happens, then the next pick available, you know, because yes. the, the pick, the, the, the picks that you can send out in the future, you know, it, the clock starts at the draft. So the reason why it doesn't show today is because it, yeah. the NBA draft. You happens can trade first Thursday. round picks seven years into the future. Obviously, we're talking about a pick that's going to be in 2030. That doesn't you can't trade that pick until the next league year starts July 1st. But we already mentioned earlier that you can't even trade for Damian Lillard until July 8th. So that 2030 pick will definitely be available for Miami trade. That 2023 first is basically a pick where, yeah, Portland's going to have to help have Miami select for them if there's a specific player in that range that they want. If I'm Portland, I think this is the best the Heat can do. Obviously, including Caleb Martin, you know. Realistically, them, yeah. But I, I, I think I think for Miami, that it has to be a non-starter. You need to have a team. You need to have that a guy at that role, especially when when I think they pictured Jovic kind of getting into that. Cool carrot in chat says, I'll do that every day. This this trade is actually fire. You know, this is I think this is the best they could do. I think the four picks is is a lot. And obviously, they're going to get a young player in Hero, which I think Miami viewed as a long-term partner for Bam. But obviously, you know, the clock is ticking for Jimmy Butler, Damian Lillard, obviously a ready win-now player. And they get back Nurkic, who he doesn't he could maybe play with Bam a little bit, for sure fixes their awful backup center problem. They can move him and maybe get two players out of him, you know, to a team that needs a center like Charlotte 
or something, and then you know you have uh, you have Watford that they'll probably cut. The other and, way uh, I think this trade could be t- potentially. The other way I think this trade could potentially be better for Portland is if Miami finds a third team, any of these cat space teams like Orlando, San Antonio, Detroit, Houston, to take those teams. If they miss out any of their free agent targets, would they p- want to take Tyler Hero in his remaining four years and potentially give up maybe some draft assets or any young players that they have on the roster? To swing a deal for Portland if they if they say they don't want Tyler Hero back in this trade. If if they say that, which I mean, yeah. there might be some redundancy with him and Anthony Simons, but obviously Hero is a better player than Anthony Simons. We have Beggar in chat saying Dame needs to come to Miami. We have Flacco for real says Miami Heat beat on BR. Let's go. Appreciate the love from the audience. Perfect game. Ten twenty says, what about Aiton and move Bam to the four where he belongs. Uh, kind of tough. I, I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not a big Aiton fan. I think Bam kind of shows you his versatility on defense and what he does. And but it's they not could like make Aiton the trade work, much better on Jokic. If they needed to. It's yeah, like, I'm, I'm not a fan Phoenix of, would of want moving. From Miami either. I'm not a fan of moving Bam. I'm not gonna lie. He's he's no. a guy that I hope that he oh, retires yeah, that was the other thing. in Miami. Yeah, Portland apparently wants Bam for the number three pick, which seems stupid that they would even bother asking Lime if they would take that trade. Pat Riley absolutely hangs up the phone on that as we unfortunately have to hang up the phone on our time here on Bleacher Report. We appreciate all the fine folks in chat that hung out with us, that listened to that, that asked questions, that listened to us, uh, kind of proposed these moves in the offseason. Pat Riley spoke today, so a lot, a lot to cover. But again, I'm Giancarlo Navas. This is Brian Goins. We are both uh, hosts and producers of Miami Heat Beat. You can find us on Twitter at MIA Heat Beat on Twitter, twitch.tv slash Miami Heat Beat on Twitch. And then, of course, just search our name on YouTube to find all our content, pre post game shows, live shows, all that good stuff. We love you guys. Enjoy the offseason. Lots of fun, lots of player movements. The NBA never stops. We all know this. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week.